Okay, so why video podcasting? Video content is booming all over the major platforms. So if you're going to put in energy into creating your very own podcast, you might as well put in a bit of extra effort and make it into a video podcast. With video content, you have the opportunity to repurpose it for TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Even Apple Podcasts and Spotify are moving towards video content. What about remote video interviewing? So remote video interviewing really took off during the pandemic where it was almost impossible to interview people in person. But softwares like the one I'll be talking about made it so much easier to interview people no matter where they are and also in high quality. So stick around because in the next lesson, I'll take you through all you need to know about setting up your very own remote video interview. Hey guys, in this lesson, I'll take you through how to get ready for a remote video recording interview. I'll show you my personal setup and the equipment I use, the software I use to get ready to start recording. We look at the three most important aspects, which is audio, video, and software. Let's start with audio. So for me, audio is the most important, hands down. If I would suggest to spend money on anything, it would definitely be audio. And the first thing to ensure that you have good audio for you and your guest is a microphone. Now, I personally use a condenser mic called the Blue Yeti that you can see over here, and I love it. I've only had good experiences with it, and it's really beginner-friendly. It's not that expensive for the quality that it provides, and I've had just good experiences with it. It comes with its own stand, but personally, I've tried this quite a lot, and I noticed that it picked up a lot of desk and background noise, which I didn't like that much. So the next piece of equipment that I bought, which I also recommend, is a microphone boom arm stand, which is this guy over here. And it's not that expensive. I bought mine on Amazon for like 15 or $20. And I just attached my Blue Yeti microphone over here, facing downwards. For some reason, when I face it downwards, it doesn't pick up as much background noise, which I quite like. Now, normally I would put my mic a bit closer to my face. I would put it like here-ish, but because I like to have a nice view on camera and I want you to see my face, I've compromised and I've put it a little bit out of sight, which means that the sound will be a little bit less good, but that's fine. That's a price I'm willing to pay. The next piece of equipment that I definitely recommend is a pop shield filter or a pop filter shield. And that's this guy over here. And the reason why is that it filters or blocks out the pff, ts, ts sounds or pop sounds. And with my accent, my bizarre accent, I say ts, 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 quite a lot. And this nicely blocks it out. So I definitely recommend. I bought it on Amazon as well. And again, it's not that expensive. Now, another suggestion that I definitely recommend, another piece of equipment is headphones, because this as well will cancel the sound. Now you can invest in a really high quality, fancy headphones like these guys over here, Audio-Technica. But since I have quite a small head and I don't think it looks very good on my face, personally, I would only use this when I'm doing screencasting. So when I'm actually doing videos, I'd rather have something a bit more discreet because right now it feels like I'm drowning in equipment, I think. So when I'm filming my face, what I like to use is just Apple AirPods. And they're quite good because they're pretty discreet. The only problem with them is that they're battery reliant, which I don't like because sometimes, you know, if you run out of battery, that's it. Another type of headphones that I use are these. The plain Apple cable headphones, which I like. They're reliant. You don't have to worry about battery, about charging them, about Bluetooth. So they're pretty good. Now, one of the best suggestions I got for high quality audio and for echo reduction is to making sure that your room that you're filming in doesn't have a lot of echo. You're basically echo proofing your room. 
things like hard walls or hard wooden floors can cause echo. And so what I did is I had a rug put in, I throw some pillows and some blankets all over the place. I use cat trees, plants, and these will all block out echo to make my room ready for filming. Another piece of equipment that's really good for reducing echo is this guy over here, which is a echo reduction foam board. And I got like loads of these and I just started sticking them everywhere on the walls, on the floors, and it really helps with echo. Okay, so that was it for audio. Now let's look at video. So you're looking at me right now from a really high quality Canon DSLR camera. And it's very expensive, but don't worry at all. You don't have to spend so much money on a camera because today smartphones do a pretty good job as well as webcams and even your desktop built-in camera does a good job. So right now I'm using my Canon DSLR but when I'm actually doing the recording, I'm going to use my MacBook Pro built-in camera because it's so much easier to set up. Now, the most important thing you need to know about video is lighting. Light is the most important part. So if you've got your lights good, you're ready to go. And the best type of light is natural light. And I've got a lot of natural light in this room, but I'm also using a newer LED white and yellow light on a stand. I've also got a white umbrella to soften the harsh light. And sometimes I use two when I don't have enough lighting, when it's a gloomy, rainy day in London. But today I've got quite a good amount of light. And the last piece of equipment is one Bengal cat called Sky. She's my personal assistant for this course today. And the final part to look at is softwares. So hands down, the best quality software for remote video recordings and interviews is Riverside. And I'll explain to you in a bit later on in the course why that is and why I personally chose Riverside to record remote video interviews. I also recommend to download Google Chrome, which is the browser that Riverside is used with. So make sure you and your guest have Chrome installed in your computer as a browser. And then finally, to edit all your videos, I definitely recommend my favorite video editing software, which is Adobe Premiere Pro. And I recommend it because I'm a big Adobe fan. I love Adobe software and for me, they all have the same language. So it's only natural for me to use Adobe Premiere Pro and it's really easy to use. I'll show you later how to make some simple edits and edit this video. So that more on that later. Okay, so that's it for getting yourself ready to film. So just plug everything in and we'll be ready to go. <laughs>